you can see, see the screen. Phil, can you? Yeah, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to start with a story or a scenario. Imagine you are the CEO of a mid-sized company. One morning, you arrive at the company. Things are not the same. There were murmurs in the corners. People were looking uncomfortable. And you were wondering, what's wrong? Then your IT manager comes to you. I've got something to say. Overnight, our entire networks being encrypted by ransomware. And there's a message from hackers on the screens asking to pay $2 million in Bitcoin. All your data will be wiped out. My dear friends, panic sets in. The clock is ticking. Every minute lost costs thousands of dollars. What do you do? This is not a fictional scenario. Multiple companies have encountered this situation. They were crippled. They were unsure what to do. And they've handled those situations in two different ways. There are some companies paid the ransom while others point blank refuse. Today, we will delve into the world of ransomware, explore why some companies decided to pay the ransoms and heed to these ransomware demanders, and at the same time, why some companies decided not to and weigh these situations. Let's start with ransomware. What is ransomware? Ransomware is a type of malicious software designed to block access to a computer. It can happen with a very, with a, with a very innocent email, a phishing email coming to you. Looks legitimate. I think I know the person. You click on it. And that has the potential to lock the files in your system. Think like this. Somebody locks your files with a key, which is called encryption. In this scenario, key is not a physical key, similar to what we have to our doors or to our car. It's a code. It can be a number or an alphanumeric set of characters, which is hard to guess. Now you have a situation where your files are locked. You cannot access. And there is a demand on the table from the ransomware hacker. We got your files. We have the key. If you want to access them, pay us a certain amount of money in Bitcoin. We know why they use Bitcoin, because it's very difficult to track the transaction trail in Bitcoin. If you pay the money, we give you the key and you get the data back. Hunky dory. That's the scenario. Back in the day, most of these ransomware happened for multiple computers. It happened to individual users. People like you and me. Where they lock the file, take the control of the device and get a ransom from an individual person. But nowadays, it has advanced to a situation where they target big companies. They are targeting bigger fish. And also, ransomware as a service has advanced this to a situation where you, now you don't have to be tech savvy to be a hacker. You only have to have the criminal mindset or hacker's mindset. You can go to the dark web and you can get the software you need to ransom an organization, and you can run your ransomware ploy. It's that easy. Now we have a situation 
yeah, that's a ransomware demand similar to this. This is one of the very popular ransomware called WannaCry, which is very popular in 2017-18, which is not very much in uh, circulation these days. This is one of the ransomware demands, which can come into the computer, asking the users to pay a certain amount of money. The amount varies, but they need that in ransom. Now we looked at how ransomware works. Let's look at why companies decide to pay a ransom when they meet a demand for a similar payment. The main reason is immediate recovery. As we all know, for organizations, every minute lost is money foregone. So what they think is, these people are asking for money. Let's pay it. Let the, let the problem go away and get back to the operation. Let's go in the happy path or the easier path. And that's one of the main reasons why companies pay ransom. The other reason is cost-benefit analysis. These hackers, they are math savvy. So they do the calculations and they ask a certain amount so they know the amount is always less than what the company would lose if the attack goes on for a few more days. So the companies do the maths as well. If we are out of operation for three days, we will be losing this much of amount in millions of dollars. These people are asking a fraction of the profit that we will lose. lose. They give it away, problems gone, and the operations are bad. And the other scenario is the mindset of the stakeholder. We all know that what a company does will depend on the culture of the company. Where is the culture coming from? A lot of, lot of cultures being honed by what people in the decision-making powers think about what they need to do or what they should do, or the shareholders. If they think we have a ransomware demand, let's pay the money, get the operations back, then the, the company is more inclined to go in that path. And the last one is, if you don't have good backup practices, it is very difficult to recover on your own for a ransomware attack. If the files are locked, or if the files are in the mercy of the ransomware attacker or the hacker, only way or one of the main ways you can get back on your feet is with the help of backups to restore the operation. But if you don't have backup, if you are a company who's been lackluster in your backup practices, you'd better off pay the ransom because you know otherwise you have no way out. So now these are the reasons why companies would pay a ransom. On the other hand, what's promoting not paying the ransom. My dear friends, if you know that each cent that you are paying as a ransom is being used to promote this unethical criminal syndicate, how would you feel? If you think that each cent is being used to create sophisticated ransomware, and try to target main organizations, hospitals, the bigger healthcare providers, how would you feel? So that's one of the main reasons why companies are going against paying ransom. And another reason is, even if you pay the ransom, there's no guarantee that you would get your money back. It might be money down the drain. The hackers will get the money and they might not give you your data. So the companies are unsure how to, whether to trust these people or not. On, a, on another side, what we have seen during recent years is the governments, states, and other counties, are, they are more inclined to promote 
not paying ransomware to the hackers because they have seen that paying the ransom is promoting this illegal activity. I think we will see more and more regulations coming in the future, which will make paying ransom, which is similar to paying a terrorist organization or a criminal organization, more prohibitive. And the last point that companies would discourage themselves from paying is the reputational damage. If you pay a ransom, your customers or your main stakeholders, they all know that you did not have robust security practices. That's why you've been breached. That's why you let a ransomware attacker lock your systems. And that will dilute the trust or the reputation that you have with the customers. So my dear friends, now we looked at both the sides, pay or not pay. Let's look at some of the major ransomware attacks happened during the last decade. Colonial pipeline in 2021. The largest fuel pipeline in the US, transporting gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel to the East Coast. Attackers encrypted the IT infrastructure or information technology infrastructure supporting the physical pipelines and demanded a ransom to be paid in cryptocurrency. This crippled the whole transportation of fuel to the East Coast. Imagine in an era that everything depends on how, how well you can get your fuel supply, not having the continuous fuel supply for six days. That's a time period this impacted the supply to East Coast. Colonial Pipeline had to shut down most of the unaffected pipelines to reduce the impact or the reduce, reduce the propagation of the ransomware. And even what, what was left in those areas, what was left in fuel, the demand and supply kicked in, the prices were skyrocketed. The end result, my friends was Colonial Pipeline, paid 75 Bitcoins or 404 million to get the operations back. In their eyes, that is minuscule compared to the money they've lost or they would have lost if this kept going. JBS Foods, 2021. They are the world's largest meat processing company. Ransomware attack encrypted the files, similar to Colonial Pipeline, and demanded ransom. They had to shut down their plants in USA, Canada, and Australia to stop the attack from spreading. This caused major meat shortages in these countries. Imagine people not having beef, pork, poultry and what that would have caused for their day-to-day -day meals. And again, similar to Colonial Pipeline, whatever meat was left in the shops, the price has sky skyrocketed. And the end result, JBS Foods paid a ransom of 11 million in Bitcoin. Now we have seen two scenarios where critical infrastructure was impacted by ransomware, and people were running shortages in their day-to-day -day commodities. And the companies heeded to the ransomware demand. The next attack was unprecedented. It was on NHS system in 2017. NHS is National, National Hospital Services in England. For this ransomware attack, they used WannaCry. Remember the WannaCry demand screen that I shared at the, at the start, so that's the ransomware they used in this instance. That impacted multiple systems across 80 healthcare institutions out of the 236 across England. The demand was $300 to $600 per 
third device encrypted. It caused massive cancellations, thousands of appointments, delayed treatments, and also forced some emergency departments to divert patients to other facilities. And NHS had to shut down some key systems to prevent the ransomware from spreading. Needless to say, the massive healthcare delays this has caused and the impact to the patient. But in this situation or in this scenario, NHS decided to handle it differently. They decided we are, we are going to get budged by the ransomware demands. We're not going to pay the ransom. But the recovery path was very difficult and long winded cost 92 million pounds to recover their systems. But as a principle, they refused to pay the ransom. Now we have looked at different ransomware attack scenarios. They are the ransomware paid, and there are some companies or organizations decided not to pay, but, even when companies decide to pay the ransom, the aftermath has been very complicated. To start paying the ransom does not guarantee that you would get your files back. Remember, in here, you are dealing with unethical criminal hackers. What trust that you can place on them to give your files or give your data back even after paying your money. And even if you get your data back, how can you trust them not to have a copy of your data, which will go into dark web or sale in a few days time? And interestingly, if you pay the ransom, that's another way of you advertising that you are an organization who's prepared to pay a ransom. And the way that you advertise that is A, you have shown to the ransomware hackers that you have bad security practices, which let a ransomware attack to happen in the first place. B, when it happens, you are prepared to pay a ransom. What better, better way you have than that to advertise yourself as a ransomware target. Now we spoke about why companies should promote not paying ransomware. So what's the secret sauce? My dear friends, prevention and preparedness is crucial here. Have regular backup and also store your backups offline. We all know that if your backups are connected to your main system, when the main system or the main computer is locked or encrypted, the backups will get encrypted too. So take it off, store offline, store in another place. Again, take another backup, store in another place. Because if you run into a situation where you are under ransomware attack, you need your backups to get back on your feet. The other one is have robust security measures. Monitor and detect abnormal activities in your systems and respond in a timely manner. And also, we all know the weakest link in cybersecurity. That's me and you, people. Not technology not processors. So invest in training people. Increase the awareness. Let them know what to look out for, what not to click and what to click. And also, if you think that you have done something that you should not have done in terms of security practices, who to inform and what to do. Lastly, incident response. Have a plan. What you have, what you're going to do if an attack happens. During a ransomware attack, 
what's the action plan is. Create a plan because during a ransomware attack, panic sets in. It's very difficult for you to take rational decisions. As John F. Kennedy has famously said, best time to repair your roof is when the sun is shining. Hence, incident plan should be prepared well in advance when things are under control. So my dear friends, now we looked at both the scenarios. Initially, we looked at what ransomware is. Then we looked at why some companies pay ransom. Then they are confronted with ransomware demand and why some companies decided not to. And we also looked at what practices will help you to protect against this sort of attack. When I weigh up both the options of paying a ransom and not paying a ransom, Thinking myself as an individual in the community and looking at the long-term betterment of the human society, I prefer to stand and support against heeding to ransomware demands. My dear friends, where would you stand? Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Asanga, for that 